Well, for today's business update, I'm joined in the studio now by Brian Quinn. And we're starting uh, in the US, where former President uh, Donald Trump is facing uh, both legal and financial woes this Monday. Uh, he is. Trump will be in a Manhattan criminal court to face charges of covering up a sex scandal. Hexy, that may be the least of his words for the day, though. The New York Attorney General could begin freezing Trump's bank accounts and seizing assets Monday, part of a judgment for a fraud trial in which he was found liable for inflating the value of his assets to secure a better loan terms. A fine of $355 million has become $454 million with interest. In order to appeal the decision, Trump would need to post a bond of 120 percent of that, or just under $550 million. The problem for Trump, of course, is that he doesn't seem to have the money. He has said he has nearly $500 million in cash, but no one really knows. In any case, he would need around $1 billion in order to post the bond and still have sufficient funds to run his businesses. 30 insurance companies have already declined to put up that bond money, perhaps unsurprising for a businessman notorious for not paying his bills. Trump and his lawyers will be seeking either a temporary waiver or a deal with the attorney general. I think we should be looking for a decision from the first department appellate court. This is really the key issue is, are they going to lower the bond amounts? One option that's on the table in any case is a settlement, right? If they came to the AG's office and said, we'll settle this case, we'll write you a check next week for $225 million. I think anyone would have to take that seriously. So, Brian, uh, let's say a last-minute deal isn't reached. What next for Trump? Well, he's not poor, of course, uh, Axie. In New York City alone, Trump has nearly a billion dollars uh, in real estate holdings, including the Trump Building at 40 Wall Street, Trump Tower in Midtown, and 1290 Avenue of the Americas. Attorney General Letitia James could start court action to seize some of those properties, the problem is that almost none of them belong solely to Trump. They're protected by a maze of complex ownership structures. Trump could sell his interests in some of his real estate, but that in itself could drive their value down, making it harder for him to cover the bond. Another option is now his social media company, Truth Social, which on Friday received approval to merge with the Special Purpose Acquisition Company, or SPAC, which will take it public on the NASDAQ this week. At around $37 per share, Trump's 58% stake is now worth around $3 billion. That's nearly doubling his net worth. The problem there is that while Trump could potentially use those shares as collateral on a loan to pay the bond, he is contractually prohibited from selling those shares for six months. Take a listen. Trump owns more than a half of the shares of this company. The caveat, though, is that he might not be able to cash in those shares as quickly as he would like. Um, there is a lockup period on the shares, um, and his li his, um, there are limits on when he can sell them. So, uh, Brian, how about a check on the day's trading action? Actually, uh, Asian indexes are in the red as we uh, kick off the week with investors. Uh, keeping an eye on regional inflation figures, both Singapore and Malaysia have reported higher than expected price rises on Monday. Inflation reports for Australia and Japan, meanwhile, are due out later in the week. The Nikkei in Tokyo down more than 1%. Most analysts are expecting the market's long rally to continue, though, as Western central banks signal incoming interest rates cuts uh, later in the year after a largely successful fight against inflation. Earlier, France 24 spoke with Jamil Ahmad, chief analyst at GTC Group in Abu Dhabi, about just that. We're getting continued signals from world central bankers that lower interest rates are coming. That included from many central banks last week, where we had the Bank of England, the U.S. Federal Reserve, we also had the Swiss National Bank, and the Bank of Japan all had their interest rate decisions last week. At the same point, we are also getting more positivity that this long battle that we've had against inflation that's taken place now for the past two years, yes, inflation might still be historically high, but that battle to weaken inflation prospects is still doing a fantastic job compared to where we were. That's provided some hope toward markets. Brian Quinn with that business update. Thank you very much.